Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the week. I'm so excited that this whole vlog is going to be on my new camera instead of on my phone. Today is the big day where I'm meeting with all of the orthopedic doctors to go over some of the testing for my leg, and hopefully we are going to leave with a bit of a plan. I'm slightly discouraged because I was hoping that I would be leaving this appointment with like a concrete plan of action. And unfortunately now that my neck and arm are still such an issue, no matter what they really say today, I'm still not going to have a plan. And that drives me crazy because you know how much I'm a planner and I'm just like a bit of a control freak. But I'm still so thankful that we have this appointment and I will let you guys know how it goes. Surgery. I'm gonna be having surgery. They've agreed to take my case. Not only that, they were amazing. They've decided that all three of them are going to be present during the surgery. They've decided to fuse my fibula to my tibia. They were saying that in my case, they just didn't see any kind of donor ligament or synthetic ligament being able to do the job. The best option is just to fuse the two bones together with some screws and some extra bone. Kind of can't believe it. I didn't want to let myself accept it as a reality until they actually said that they would take my case and that they would do surgery. And now they have. So I feel like I'm finally getting to process it for the first time. I didn't ever think that this was going to be an option for me. I thought that as an EDS patient, a knee injury was just going to be a lifelong sentence and I've been in and out of knee braces for pretty much more than half my life so I just kind of figured that's what my life is gonna look like and the thought of helping the problem and the pain at all in any way permanently or semi-permanently it's just a really exciting thought for me and some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. She's so excited that she needs surgery. You luckily probably have no idea what it's like to live with severe agonizing pain day to day. Anything that could give me a chance at lowering that pain level is absolutely worth it to me. The main doctor said he's thinking it's about a 70, maybe 80% chance that this is going to work. I'd of course love to hear that it's a 100% chance, but 70 to 80% on a patient like me is pretty darn good. So now the only thing that's standing in my way is this neck stuff. Hopefully tomorrow we get a little bit farther on that. I have physical therapy again. She's going to reevaluate my neck again and then contact my surgeon again about what she's feeling. We both feel like something is really wrong and needs to be dealt with and the surgeon today agreed that the neck is more important to start out with i just want to get it out of the way so i can get to recovering i'm hoping we can do the knee fairly soon after the neck that way i have just like one big recovery instead of two smaller ones it kind of stings to like work and work and work to get stronger and to get over something and then just have to have another surgery and start at square one again. Obviously, that is up to how comfortable the orthopedics feel about doing surgery on someone who has had a recent neurosurgery. Hi guys, happy Tuesday. You just got back from physical therapy and I am thoroughly wiped out. I just feel really sick in every possible way. That drive is really getting rough. I was hoping that maybe things would be a little bit better today, but I actually have motion now to the left, so I can turn my head a little bit to the left and to the right. She couldn't feel as much sliding in my spine this time as last time, which is good, but she did feel some and we seem to think that it's because of really bad muscle spasms. The muscles are so tight that they are kind of trying to hold everything together. I don't know if it's better to leave them that tight or to try to take some kind of muscle relaxant. I just feel 
like I'm at my breaking point with pain. Uh, like I thought that like it couldn't get any worse with my leg. You know, I was just on like the edge of going to the ER with some of the leg pain that I've been having. And then adding in this neck pain, the neck pain makes the leg pain look like a paper cut. I literally haven't slept more than an hour and a half the last couple nights. I'm like, I'm in crisis mode and I don't know how long my body can hold out like this. I honestly don't. I feel like I can't function and it's getting harder to take care of myself in all of the ways that I need to. I can't be letting other things slip. I'm getting so nauseous from the pain that I've been having to stop my feet. I've been losing weight. I didn't really notice it very much until I went to do my blood thinning injections a couple nights ago and I realized like I have no fat left on my stomach. I feel like all of the hard work that I've been doing over the last couple years to strengthen my body and to move forward is just slowly being undone not even slowly it's just quickly being undone i'm losing the weight again i'm having more vision problems my jaw is acting up again i'm nauseous again but we're home now and i get to rest and hopefully just like decompress i don't have any more appointments until friday so i don't have to be like hauling myself around everywhere in this much pain my physical therapist was actually really concerned today <laughs> is that after my session I was pretty much like blacking out from pain and um, just shaking <laughs> and she wants me to take something for the pain and usually I'm really against even taking anything for pain and I want to take something for pain and it's just like a scary feeling that I don't have anything that I haven't reacted to except the tramadol that I take. I don't have enough to take extra. They only give me exactly how many I need per month and so that would mean going without and I just like I don't want to bargain with another day's dose so I'm just gonna try to keep managing pain with heat and relaxation. Trish is going to contact my surgeon again, I believe, and just update him on what is going on. The situation is not getting better and it's getting worse. And if for any reason he decides that he isn't going to do surgery or he can't do surgery soon, Trish said that I should really just get that knee surgery done as soon as possible before I cause any more damage. But I don't think that the knee surgeon is going to do surgery until my neck is no longer an issue so i feel like i'm just kind of caught and i'm at the mercy of all of these doctors and what they decide i'm just trying to stay calm at this point it's not in my control it's out of my hands i'm just trusting god's plan that this is all going to work out in the end he has not failed me yet that's all i can really do okay guys so major change of plans it's like tuesday night Around 7.30, Trish gives me a call and says, I just talked to the surgeon. I told him what I've been observing. We talked about your imaging and he wants to see you in clinic on Thursday. So today's Tuesday night <laughs> and he's all the way in Maryland. So we were like, oh yes, we have a day off tomorrow. We have no appointments. We don't have to drive anywhere. We're like getting ready for bed. And now we're just running around frantic, packing everything in sight. I just threw a bunch of clothes in a suitcase. I don't think that any of them go together. Just making sure that we have saline and meds and trying to coordinate. N nursing service is just insanity. But bikers cannot be choosers and I'm extremely thankful that they're able to get me in so quickly. We are working very hard and we will get there. We always do. And I feel so bad that we're leaving my family and my sister again. It just, it's not great timing. I guess it's never good timing, but it's especially poor timing now. She just started school. She's not feeling great. And she actually had to cancel a major appointment of her own on Thursday because we won't be here, so that's really tough. Yeah, it's hard to be a family when you have to do a lot of medical travel and it stinks for everyone involved, not just the patient, it really affects everybody. But everyone's been really great and we're gonna make it. 
Okay, well, somehow I managed to get all my stuff packed up with the use of one arm, which was not super easy. I pretty much just took like all of my belongings and threw them in a giant pile. And I just grabbed like an armful of clothes out of my dresser and threw it into a suitcase. So I don't even know what I packed. Well, anyway, we're about to leave, get on the road. This is gonna be a really rough drive. It's, it's usually between like eight and 10 hours, depending on traffic. I downloaded an audiobook and I brought some guided meditation and I'm just gonna try to zone out for like nine hours. Hey guys, well, we are on our way to Maryland. The entire car is just absolutely packed. So what it looks like when we go absolutely anywhere. With these kind of trips, it's so hard to tell what you're going to need because right now we don't know if we're gonna be there two days or two weeks. We have honestly no idea what to expect and so it's just packed for kind of anything. But that's okay because we've learned time and time and time again that you need to be prepared to stay longer than you think you're going to. So maybe we overpacked a little bit, but of course, if we didn't overpack, I'm sure we would have forgotten something. Hello, you guys. We are at our destination. We're staying with our friends. Once again, I'm whispering because it's like three in the morning. That was definitely a rough ride, but we made it here in one piece. My appointment is tomorrow. I'm not gonna get a whole lot of sleep before we have to leave for that, so. That's gonna be a rough day as well. I was able to get another video uploaded for you guys today. You've probably already seen it by now. It's something that I've been putting together for a while now. So most of it was obviously pre-filmed, pre-neck, shoulder issues, except for the opening and closing. A couple of nights ago, I happened to be wearing that same shirt. So when I was getting ready for bed and took off the sling, I was like, well, it's now or never. <laughs> So I just grab my camera, film the intro and outro, put my thing back on, and then I was finally able to get it edited and up for you guys. So that's why you don't see the brace and the sling in that video. Unfortunately, I did not have a miraculous recovery. I just pre-filmed it. Although we can still hope for that miraculous recovery. Anyway, I hope you guys liked that video. I'm exhausted. I need to get to sleep, so talk to you in a bit. Good morning guys. It is Thursday morning. Today is the big day. I am headed off to see my neurosurgeon to see what he has to say about the whole neck situation. I am not sure I even really slept last night. I was just kind of in and out of it so maybe I got like an hour or something like that. That is why I'm already wearing my sunglasses <laughs> even like the household lights are too bright for me right now. I just have a killer headache. I gotta say it is just so nice having a place to come and stay down here with friends instead of having to go and stay in a hotel. It's just nice to feel welcome somewhere. And then like instead of totally dreading coming down here for all of these appointments and surgeries, we kind of get excited to see, oh, who's gonna be down there and catch up with old friends. And look at this pillow. This was waiting for me when I got here. Oh, it's upside down and I have one hand, hold on. Stay. Is that not the most me thing you've ever seen in your entire life? It looks almost exactly like a bag I have, and it is so cute. She's also the one who actually gave me this elephant blanket that I always have. So she's kind of like my personal elephant supplier. It's just nice to have like one, I don't know what the word is, like certainty when everything else is so up in the air to know that there's always a place waiting for you. It's just nice to have a place that you can settle in and feel at home. Hello, you guys. So I saw my surgeon and I told him what was going on. He looked at my imaging again and again and again and again, just going over and over and over what could possibly be going on because it's not really obvious on the imaging. He definitely was able to identify the spot where a lot of my pain was coming from. All I had to do was feel around until he found that magic button that made me jump nearly through the roof and start shaking like crazy. So he definitely believes that I'm not making up the pain. It's just a matter of figuring out what the heck it's coming from. There's like this weird special screw that they used at that one spot in my fusion 
And I get the feeling that it wasn't a very common one that he was very used to using. So he was thinking that maybe it was coming loose. My body was kind of pushing it out. And that would make a lot of sense. That's kind of what it feels like. And I'm not surprised that my body would reject something that's very me. <laughs> he sent out a text to his buddy who specializes in the hardware that they use with some of my imaging and he's gonna have him look at it and see if he notices anything and if he has any experience with these screws being rejected and he's supposed to call us sometime tonight hopefully you know if it is just a matter of a loose screw they can just go in there with their little screwdriver and drive it back in but he was really sweet about it and he just said you know we're gonna figure it out one way or another and we're gonna fix it he really wants me to be able to move on and he really wants me to be able to get this knee situation figured out as well and speaking of that we actually set a date for the surgery it is going to be March 28th it's like two months away but if whatever we're doing right now turns surgical I think the timing is going to be totally perfect so that is that I'm just here resting now, running my fluids, watching the X-Files. Oh, and great news, they found my ring splint. I don't know where it was, but apparently the cleaning lady found it and turned it over to the friend we're staying with who gave it back to me. So I'm super excited. Unfortunately, they found it the day after I ordered a replacement. <laughs> But that's actually okay because I wanted to order that specific size anyway for my other hand. So it all works out. I'm happy to have my splint back. I felt like I was like missing a finger for a while because it just wasn't functioning right. So I'm very happy about that. That's great news. A lot of you guys asked about that. So it has been returned to me. <laughs> I'm definitely feeling pretty rough after the drive and then not sleeping and then the appointment and just the adrenaline of it all. <sighs> I'm trying to stay awake because if he calls, I don't want to be asleep. We came all the way here, so I am not missing a phone call. I don't know why I have such a hard time sleeping when I'm supposed to be sleeping, but I have absolutely no problem falling asleep when I need to be up for something. Anyway, that was my day. Oh, and I also met a really sweet woman at my surgeon's office. She was leaving at the same time that I was leaving, and she came up to me and said that she recognized me from my videos and it was really nice so shout out to jill it was so nice to meet you she put like zebra duct tape on her neck brace and it looked really neat it was great to meet you jill you rock good luck on your recovery i give you so much credit honestly i give so much credit to any zebras who are also raising kids. I have absolutely no idea how you guys do it. You guys are amazing. I can barely take care of myself. I don't know what the heck I would do if I had kids. But okay, so my doctor did call. It looks like there probably is a screw loose or some kind of rod connector sprung loose. I'm not quite sure really what the whole infrastructure in there is like, but I will take his word for it. And so he said that the best course of action would be to just kind of go in there next week and take a look around, tighten up anything that's loose, make sure that nothing's broken that isn't showing up on the imaging. And so after I got off the phone with him, of course, I got on the phone with Trish and just talked it through with her. And, you know, she was really glad for the quick turnaround time and the fact that he was willing to listen to what I had to say and especially what she had to say because honestly none of this would have happened if it wasn't for her. She was the one who really was in my corner and was able to say to him, you know, her imaging looks okay because she's lying on her back and not moving, but that's not the problem. The problem happens when she moves and you know, I can feel the movement and it wasn't there before and now she's in pain so clearly something's going on. You know, she's willing to really put her neck on the line for me. Uh, yeah, she's really great and 
I'm definitely gonna miss her for the next few weeks while I'm here. They're gonna try to get me in some time on the surgical schedule sometime next week. His schedule's really insane, but the thing is this is probably like a really tiny issue. It's causing a lot of pain, but it's probably just like a five second thing if it is like a loose screw. I'm hoping that means it's a little bit easier to squeeze in than like say a giant fusion, which takes like eight hours. In the meantime, I'm probably going to have to try to get some pre-op testing, which if you guys remember last time was actually not super easy to do. We would have gotten it done at home, but we really just had like a few hours notice before we really had to leave. So it is what it is. <coughs> I am not swallowing well. Sorry. It's gonna be crazy. We have this. And then on the way home, we're going to have to go to Virginia and get a new jaw splint made. You guys were so funny. I saw in the comments, you were like, I live in Virginia. I can pick up the splint for you and mail it. Or, you know, and some of you are wondering why they can't just send me a replacement. And that would be because I don't have digital molds. So what they do for a lot of people these days is they make digital molds. So they have a special scanner. It's super cool. And they put a bunch of little plates in your mouth and they can do like a 360 scan of your teeth and then they will always have like the perfect 3D mold. I have not been a candidate for that so far because I couldn't open my mouth far enough for them to put the plates in. So every time I go I have to get those like goopy impressions made and then they do like a plaster cast of it and then they use that to model the splint. I actually am in possession of that plaster cast, but unfortunately the bottom front teeth didn't really survive the splint making process. So I really need new impressions and the fact that I'm about to have possibly another cervical surgery just tells me that I'm going to need it all reworked anyway like I did last time. So there'd be no point anyway in getting the same splint made again. It's obviously just like the best option now to go after my surgery. That way, if my teeth shift or change position, I don't have to like totally remodel the thing again. Hello you guys, it is Friday. I am out of my contraption for a little while. I am just about to go hop in the shower. It is so nice to take everything off for a little bit. As much as it helps and takes away a lot of my symptoms, being in those braces for long periods of time, especially sleeping in them, is really, really, really uncomfortable. And it's just left me covered in bruises. So I really relish my showers. Just finished my last saline infusion for the week. I'm finishing on a Friday instead of a Thursday this week since I kind of missed out on a day when we were driving. I'm trying to de-access in a minute. It's going to feel amazing having no braces and no needle. I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty rough shower since I can't really raise my arms. Definitely can't raise my left arm. I can raise my right arm to about here before it gets too weak and painful. So... <laughs> I might have to have my mom shampoo my hair, we'll see. Whatever, it's nothing we haven't done before. But anyway, I just wanted to check in with you guys. We actually have a surgery date scheduled now, so I will be having surgery this coming Wednesday that is five days away. We have this whole weekend to relax, which is great. And then on Monday, I have to have all my pre-op testing done, my pre-op blood work, and Tuesday, we're having someone come and access my port. I would rather have my port accessed here by home healthcare than have it access it in the hospital. I would rather not access it around any hospital germs, but that's just me. That might just be a Christina thing. It's definitely going to be nice to just have this weekend to relax. Having this day to relax was amazing. I mean, today I pretty much like slept all day. I slept till like 3 30 p.m. I've just been really behind on my calories because I haven't been able to run my formula at the rate that I usually run it. So that really set off my blood sugar issues. I was feeling really dehydrated because I missed a day of saline and I just, I just really needed a rest day today and I'm feeling a lot better now. So that's great, but hopefully the shower doesn't send me back over the edge. I don't know, it's just crazy to think about going back into surgery in five days. I kind of hope that I was over this for a while, but it has been 
pretty much almost exactly a year since my last fusion in that area. And I always wonder, you know, how done can you really be? Because even though my whole spine is taken care of or fused or stabilized or however you want to say it, what is the longevity on that kind of thing? How often does it need to be touched up? I'm kind of currently sporting a lot of hardware in this body and you know even a car has to go in for a tune-up every year but anyway i'm getting really tired and the pain is really setting in just from sitting up and talking to you guys so i better get my port deaccessed and my butt in the shower before i've used up all my energy for the day hi guys it is saturday now new day same shirt no judgment i guess that my last minute packing skills aren't quite as good as i thought that they were i think i underestimated how cold it was going to be so I might be wearing this shirt a lot in the next couple of vlogs. <laughs> but that's okay, because it's my new favorite shirt. And I love it. I haven't really done much today. We've just kind of been taking it in, relaxing, enjoying the calm before the storm of this crazy week ahead. Definitely catching up on my sleep. I think I slept till like 5.30 today. But to be fair, I didn't go to bed until like 7 or 8 this morning. But I did manage to take a shower and wash my hair, which was quite a feat. And yeah, now I have to edit this video and gear up for another round of surgery. I've been getting a lot of questions about why I need this surgery and about just why I needed fusion in the first place. And I'm not going to totally get into it right now because I'm going to put a huge video together about my spinal fusion journey and how we've gotten to where we are today because it's something that you guys haven't really seen. You've seen more of the after than the before. You've seen some surgeries, but I haven't really gotten too into my past. But what I definitely don't want is for this to scare you guys away from having fusions. Obviously, these are surgeries not to be taken lightly, and I don't think that you should take any surgery lightly, especially with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. But I just need to make sure it's very clear that my doctor did not mess up. My physical therapist did not mess up. This is not her fault. This is not my fault. There's nothing that I did that I shouldn't have been doing. There's nothing that I necessarily did to break this or loosen this. What people don't seem to understand is fusion is not a cure for EDS. It's not even really a treatment for EDS. It's kind of just an extreme measure that is taken to stop brain and nerve damage. But it is definitely not a cure, and it's not usually kind of one and done. It's kind of something that you have to keep up with. Really, the nature of EDS is your body gradually falling apart all of the time. Fusing one area does not make that any less true. We can fuse all we want, do surgery all we want, but the EDS is always going to be there, and it's always going to be fighting. But you better believe that I am going to fight back hard. Alright, so I better end this video so I can start editing it. The Wi-Fi here it takes like 20 hours to upload a YouTube video, so I gotta get a hard start. If you guys liked this video this week, it'd be cool if you gave it a thumbs up. And you know, you can always subscribe, join our little family here, and that is about it. Anyway, see you guys next week. Bye.